Welcome to episode 32 of the 24 Hour Hustle Show. And today we got special guests. Overall immaculate entrepreneur, mentor, he speaks, he does community service work, <laughs> doing everything. Lee Davis. <laughs> Welcome to the 24 Hour Hustle Show. I'm your host, Anthony Freeze, and this is the show where we get the chance to sit down with amazing people and find out how they're maximizing on their 24 hours. Also, if this is the first time you're finding us, definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on that bell so that you can see us every single Friday at 12 p.m. Um, but today, we got my man here in the city of Pittsburgh doing a lot of great things, Lee Davis. Um, you actually got nominated to be on the show because all the great things that you're doing. So I'm glad that we got the opportunity to connect and start to build. And yeah. I'm glad to have you on the show. So welcome to the show. Hey, man. <laughs> Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate you, man. You know, because I'm not the average guy. You no, know not I mean? at all. <laughs> and not in the sense that, you know, what I got going on, I'm talking about I ain't in really too many people's circles in this city. You know what I mean? So I don't get caught up in all the schisms and the silos and circles. So. Sometimes it surprises me when people even know who I am or what I do, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because I don't go to no mega church, I ain't in a fraternity, I, I didn't, you know, there's certain things that a lot of people in the city subscribe to that I don't, or I, you know, I'm not against it or anything. I don't have no PhD or masters and all, all this stuff that people think you need to be successful in this city, so... Maybe that's why I ain't in a lot of circles. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people still know you do, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's just pretty much based on the work, you know what I mean, all these years and mm -hmm. different things that I've been doing. Absolutely. And the amount of people I've helped along the way, because that's what it's all about. Really. Oh, yeah. And it adds up. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for people who don't know who you are, how about you, uh, you know, just give us a little bit of your background, a little bit of your story, kind of give us the... The inception, the ins in, yeah, the, the inside the, scoop. Exactly. <laughs> um, first of all, man, um, I wouldn't be where I am today without my, you know, my friends and family, man, and that that includes, you know, growing up in the Braddock area, North Braddock and Rankin um, areas. So, if it wasn't for friends and family from those areas, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. First of all, mm -hmm. and by the grace of God. <laughs> and a few people uh, standing in the gap for me and praying real hard, you know, so. Definitely shout out to, to to my loved ones, man. But um, yeah, man. Uh, Talbot Towers, Braddock Projects. Um, grew up kind of you know on the rough side, like a lot of folks, you know. Um, but beautiful, you know. The struggle was beautiful, man. I can't complain about it, man. Grandma, moms, dad, grandfather, everybody always looked out. Aunts, uncles. So um, uh, I believe that that's why you know I have a lot of drive in me. A lot of fortitude, uh, get up and go, and a willingness to help others, man. Because, um, you know, growing up, there were some times where, you know, the stomach was a little uh, empty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. And so, you know, you never want anybody to have that feeling. You know, right. and I always grew up with that, like, man, if, if I become this person or that person, I'm always look out for the kids coming behind me or the neighborhood that I come from. Um, you know, and, and with that being said, you know, uh, through no fault of my friends or family, uh, when the 90s hit, you know, after coming out of the 80s, being the break dancer and getting into rap and all that stuff, hip hop, mm -hmm. hip hop was it for me, you know, hip hop generation X, man. So, mm -hmm. but um, when the 90s came, you know, that whole crack era came and and I actually was in college, you know, I mean, left high school, Woodland Hills High School, shout them out. Mm -hmm. um, ended up going to college and then that didn't work out, man. West Virginia, I was down there uh, partying hard as ever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ended up leaving there. Then I went to Waynesburg, um, became uh, president of the Black Student Union there. And at the same time, we had like a racial, heavy racial incident. It was really racist on that campus. And um, I was on a football team, and they burned the cross in front of the dorm where most of the blacks live. Really? And, and so, yeah, you know, you know, back then we was young and mature. The only way we knew how to do something was with our fists, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even though we was, we stopped with folks at the time, but... We was angry, you know what I mean? We was, we was in public enemy phase or stage back then. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it ended up being some, some incidents, some fights that went on on campus. Um, of course, they blamed all the black kids. And me being the president, I had to go stand before the board and the president, trustees, all this stuff, man. And 
they was gonna try to kick all the black uh, athletes out. Mm -hmm. You know, they kind of blamed us for being in the fights and doing certain things on campus. And I just kind of said, you know what, it was me. Everything that had happened, it was me. I, I did all the stuff that y'all saying happened. And so they was like, well, you get the drop out, we're gonna kick you out. So I just left, man. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And to this day, all my guys that was there, they all graduated, got degrees and all that stuff, man. And I'm proud of them. But that was just a moment in time where it was like, I was frustrated anyway, you know, um, and I knew college wasn't really for me, man. And now today, when I talk to some of my elders in business, they was like, man, you was just too talented for college. <laughs> you had too much in your mind and you right. had too much going on that you wanted to do, and college would have slowed you down. I mean, most of the, some of the most successful people dropped out of college. True. I mean, <laughs> when you look at it, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, all these big cats dropped out of college, so. Right. right. Um, the difference is they dropped out with a with an idea or, or a plan. <laughs> you know, you know I, I sort of had one. I knew I was going to get into entertainment at some point, um, somewhere in that business, and I eventually did. But I know when I went home, just by being around certain people, I ended up getting into the drug game. Mm. You know what I mean? And so um, moms, nobody knew I was in the stuff. Hood, nobody, because I wasn't doing it around them. I was kind of like the, the plug before the plug was. Now everybody talk about the plug, but I was dealing with... The Italian Mafia, the Israeli, um, some dudes from the Israeli Army, you know what I mean? So that's a whole nother story and book in, in and of right. itself. But um, I came home, man. I, I made a couple dollars, man. I, I helped create a store called Mo Gear mm -hmm. in downtown Pittsburgh, the original one. Of course, it spun off and did some other things. But, you know, by being a part of that culture and that lifestyle, I had money coming in um, <laughs> like crazy. And, and, you know, by the time I got busted, the U.S. government said that at the, before the age of 24, I was worth over a million dollars. You know, really? Was based, and, and it was mainly liquid. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, um, long story short, um, I'm doing big parties and concerts, and everybody gets to know who I am through that. And I sort of record label. Um, one of my first artists, I think he was on here, Leonard Hammonds. Yeah, he, he was. was. fierce back then, you know what <laughs> I mean, as a rapper. So, uh -huh. Um, that was my first artist along with I had seven others signed um, throughout the city. And I think I was the first at that time in 1993, four to sign artists from all over the city because normally, or back then, all the artists were signed from whatever hood they was, you know, and they was just a group. It wasn't really a real label back then. People just had a group of people and called it a label. Right. But we started a real label and had um, a minor distribution. Um, and so that's how I got my foot in the game. And that's, you know, from traveling, uh, and doing concerts and stuff. That's how I ended up meeting Diddy, you know, Jermaine Dupri, um, you know, uh, a bunch of other people in the industry. And I, I can go on and on, but that's how I met some of these guys. And eventually, you know, but at some point, I, I was still in the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so dealing with that whole West Coast thing with Show Ignite and yeah. Dre and all them. So, and, and my peoples was out there dealing with them in the music business. And then I had people dealing with Puffy in New York, so I was caught in the middle of the whole East Coast, West Coast thing at the time. Mm -hmm. But um, I never fed into that. I just kept getting my money and, um, you know, kind of buying property and stuff way before. Now everybody's into it back then. I learned from different people how to do that. Right. Um, and so, but eventually, like anything that you're doing wicked or wrong, you get busted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but that was the best thing that happened to me, man. I ended up getting uh, caught, charged with uh, running a corrupt organization, um, spending upwards of, you know, untold amounts of money to fight my case, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so that's why I tell these youngins out here, man, and I had to learn the hard way, but um, there's way more things I heard that you can get into positively, you know yeah. what I mean? There's, there's way, there's, there's different roads, and, and I can't knock nobody for what they do out here. I just know what it leads to, you right. know what I mean? And we <laughs> see how people taking L's out here now. Um, as far as the youngest, 12 and 13, 14 years old, out here trying to buy and sell drugs and all right. doing is catching football numbers or dying. You right. know what I mean? And so that's my message to these cats out here. And, you know, from that experience, um, I've been able to be a consultant to different people dealing with this opioid epidemic, you know mm. what I mean, to the point where... Yeah, I mean, it, Kanye's dealing geez, with that right now, yeah, as we yeah. all know, so... yeah. So you don't know where and, and when it may happen to you or your family, man, but, you know, my goal has been not to just mentor these youth out here, but to really show them how they can do this thing as far as um, not only just handling themselves through life skills and all that stuff, but um, through, you know, business. You mm -hmm. know, how can you really set yourself up in your family uh, in business? And even if you don't become, you know, some of this stuff you see on TV, like people think success is this amount of money or owning mm -hmm. this, these cars or whatever, 
Um, the, the big thing is, you know, if you don't want to get a job or you can't um, attain a certain level of education that you would like, there is other op opportunities and ways to do that, you know, mm. through entrepreneurship, which a lot of times we don't get told about. Right. You know what I mean? And so, you know, that's my message, and that's what I bring to the kids and bring to uh, young adults as well, you mm. know what I mean? So um, the, uh, the opioid thing, back to that, uh, by being a consultant, being out here in the middle of it, um, my man Rich Garland, who had One Vision, One Life back in the day, mm -hmm. kind of, uh, you know, headhunted me about this GVI thing, um, you know, the Gun Violence Initiative, and uh, he said, man, I, I need you, and without hesitation, I, I rolled, you know what I mean, because I knew how important it was, and, and uh, so I went over there with the University of Pittsburgh, and that's what I'm doing, like, Pretty much now, because I kind of I'm kind of semi retired from all my businesses. I kind of just yeah. oversee things, yeah. make things, make sure things is cool. That's a good place to be. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and not too many people at this stage in life can even say anything about retirement. Right. You know what I mean? But I've been blessed, man. And um, so that's that's where we at kind of right now. Okay. There's other things sprinkled in there, but you know, yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, what was it about business and entrepreneurship and all of that that you know made you want to get into business and entrepreneurship? Well, I knew at an early age, um, seeing how my grandfather owned a barber shop, you know what I mean? Um, I had a cousin that worked at this store called Alexander's in Braddock mm -hmm. that I didn't, whether she owned it or not, I didn't know. I thought she owned it, you know what <laughs> I mean? That was big to me to go in there and see her, you know, at the front desk or the counter or something doing what she was doing. Uh -huh. Like, that had a, a, a big impact on me. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, and then being down to Talbot Towers and the projects, right across from the projects was a was a, a, a little store that was owned by a black man. Mm -hmm. And so in my mind, this whole time, I'm thinking I'm supposed to own stuff. Yeah. You know, some people grew up thinking that they're supposed to work for somebody and all that. In my mind, I was like, I, I, I should be owning all this when I get older. Right. And I just really didn't understand how to do that at the time because you're a kid, you see these things, but and you don't know to ask my how do you do this? Yeah. Just see it. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was ingrained in me, man. And um, I just always had that entrepreneurial spirit, though, man. I just knew I couldn't work for somebody, man. <laughs> right. You know, I, I tried it. And and even when I did have a job, I think I worked for Mellon Bank for a little while, but they gave me a supervisor position, you know what I mean, uh, from the knowledge. I passed everybody up. You know, people be hating and jealous. <laughs> like, how yeah. did dude come in here? Right. No education, really, just two years of college, and they ain't get no degree, and he passed us all up. Right. But I had that drive to, like, whatever I was doing, I was going to be the best at it. Right. And so when I came in, I studied studied how people reacted and did handle the business and the company. And next thing you know, I was just navigating through all that. And so, but, I, you know, it didn't last too long. I had to get out of here. Um, I think I drove a uh, <laughs> funny store. I uh, uh, my aunt worked at the post office. I call her my aunt. She's my cousin, but she's an older cousin, so I, and I respect her so much. That, uh -huh. So uh, she got like aunt status. Yeah, yeah, she got aunt status. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, she worked at the post office. She gave me a job at the post office. Now I don't know that I'm supposed to go training first. I get there the first day. Uh -huh. Somebody say, "Hey, who's taking the truck out to go to deliver the mail?" I'm like, "Hey, me." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, dude, tell me where I'm supposed to go. I'm out Penn Hills delivering the mail <laughs> in, my, in my regular clothes. You he know, said it's regular clothes. Yeah, yeah, that is man. funny. And so I devised this plan in my head. I even know I suppose that there's a there's a system they have in place uh, where you go around the block, and when you're done with that block, you go into that that green or that blue box, pull out the next thing in mail, and it leads you around the next block. Uh, so I devised this little plan. Like once, dude told me I already knew. All right, I'm gonna go to this box. Then this one lady had had um, explained things to me. So at the end of the day, I delivers all the mail. Um, I'm back at this thing, and the thing, and, the, and the, the, the big boss come out like, um, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, I tell him my name. And then and, you hire, yeah, right? yeah. He's like, "Well, uh, he got on the list." Like, oh, you the one that wasn't in training today. I said, "Training? <laughs> I was out delivering mail all day, sir." He's like, "Huh?" I said, "Yeah, I was driving a little truck out." Oh, he snapped, man. <laughs> he snapped. This was the hey. I ain't never seen this guy again in my life, man. But it was so funny, man. He snapped out, man. But that's a crazy story. I, of course, you know they told me I had to roll. <laughs> so that was the end of my mailman days, man. So I just knew, like, man, this ain't for me, man. I uh, gotta. And, and so I knew cats in, in business and all that. So I started just uh, like anybody out here. You should get mentors to teach you the way, man. And I mm -hmm. learned that, you know. Um, along some ups and downs, man. But I had some great mentors, some great people that showed me, you know, not only 
you know, about business, but told me how to conduct myself while I'm handling business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so um, I just knew I had to do my own thing, man. And I knew that people who were like me and like-minded that couldn't work for somebody, I had to help get them on mm -hmm. or help show them the way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's been a plight of mine too, man. Like, I don't care if you the dude on the block, um, stripper, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Whatever, if I could help you get out of that lifestyle or, or even if you just one of them guys are like, man, college is just not for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, you still got to research, um, know your craft, put that 10,000 hours in to be an expert at something. Mm -hmm. But you could be self-taught or get some guys around you that know certain things that could teach you those things. Mm -hmm. So you still got to read, write, and know arithmetic. Right. So you got to know the basics. But, you know, um, other than that, man, you can learn some stuff on your own, man, and really mm -hmm. get proficient at it, man, and then make a life uh, a life out of it and feed your family and yourself. Absolutely. You know, and along the way, help others. Right. You know, so that's my main thing, man. Yes, that's definitely one of the things that I'm starting to learn, especially in this day and age with the resources and the tools that we have. With just the yes. internet alone, you could do so much. I mean, whenever the internet came around, that's when kind of changed the distribution, and right. you can add a, and you can actually reach a lot more people now just using that alone. So, right. if you have a certain you know craft or idea or business that you you want to pursue, you can actually start that up and actually reach a lot of people if you put right. the the work in. So uh, what is, what's some good advice that you would give for somebody that's, you know, looking to start, you know, a business, whether, you know, should they do an LLC or whatever it may be? Like, what are some of the guides or roadmaps uh, or different um, milestones you should hit in order to, you know, legitimize your business whenever you're starting it? Well, even <clears throat> before you start a business, you got to know exactly what you want to get into. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these kids um, have never been asked that question. Right. They're young adults, too. You know, what is what are you passionate about? What do you want to get into? What do you like? Let's start with that. Maybe we can make what you like into a business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then once we figure that out, and then we want to talk about the paperwork side, yeah, then you want to talk about whether you want to incorporate LLC. Um, and that's all about, you know, taxes, really, how your tax structure is going to be and how you might have employees and all that stuff. And we can get into that, too. But mm -hmm. the biggest thing is, what do you want to do? That's the hardest question to answer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When somebody talking about, I want to just be an entrepreneur, I want to get into business. Right. And then you ask That's a little them, too broad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, that some people may say, I don't know. And then some people may say a thousand things. Right. But And we can get to a thousand things, but we got to start first with one thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then once we figure that out and get everything handled, um, you may want to f figure out what is your budget, what you're going to need to get this started. Some things may take no money. Some things may take a little more than you may expect. Mm -hmm. But um, the first thing is what do you want to do? And then you got to have that drive and that passion, man, to go at it every day mm -hmm. and understand that you ain't going get, to get wins all like that every day. Right. You might not get in the front door until the 12,000th 12, 12, time, you know what I mean, or right. something. I don't know. Right. Don't know what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. But you can't give up. You know, because you gotta have in your mind what are you what are you really doing this for? Like my purpose <laughs> may be different than your purpose, but I know my purpose is to to one feed my family, two to help people that that may be in my situation or went through things that I went through, mm -hmm. um, and help the youth. You know what I mean? Whether it's mentoring, um, money, resources, whatever. I want to be in position to be able to do that because I we come from the generation, or I know I come from the generation where there was no crowdfunding. Right. There was no get on Facebook and help me pay for this and right. pay for that. You had to grind and hustle. And I hate to use the word grind. I'm trying to stop using that word. But you had to really get out here and put some work in. You know what I mean? And whatever your craft was, you had to be good at it and, and generate an, uh, income. And you may have had two or three things going on. And mm -hmm. so that's where my mentality is now as far as having all these businesses or being or having my hand in different companies is because that's where it come from. You, mm -hmm. you got to be doing multiple things, you know. Mm -hmm. So that transfers, you know. So that's that's what it is, man. I, I just that's all I know how to teach somebody is how to get out here and get it um, on their own, mm -hmm. you know. And with the nonprofit situations out here, a lot of people are so used to asking, asking, asking. We all know Heinz is everybody's mama and daddy. We <laughs> all know the Pittsburgh Foundation is everybody's mama and daddy. I can go on and on. And so, but what happens when they say, "Ah, uh, um, Mr. Negro, you're not the hot <laughs> Negro anymore," or right. the hot topic we're right. going over here now right what happens when they pull that money right so the new model is you should have a for-profit or figure out how to have a for-profit um support your non-profit whether you own it or somebody else outside the circle is connected to you you should always have that that revenue stream to be able to tap into um so that you ain't caught up in somebody else's web and somebody telling you what you can and cannot do right you know um 
be me by the grace of God. Somebody nominated me for that, and I got an award for that, um, which was a, a, it had money attached to it. But if they wouldn't have gave it to me, I still was going to do my thing. Right. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> some people were lying on that heavy. Some people like me didn't. Right. It was it was um, I'm thankful because it helped get a. Um, a, a uh, um, program off the ground that I was really um, trying on. I don't want to use program, but a movement. Mm -hmm. You know, um, shout out to Be Me Too and Brother Travian Shorters, uh, Ben Evans, uh, Sarah, the whole team, because um, I used that money for a, a movement called Work Pittsburgh. And that's where we brought in um, re entry cats, people coming from, you know, incarceration. We had um, uh, veterans and disabled. Mm -hmm. We hired 10 of them and trained them in the uh, skilled trades with the uh, trade unions. Mm -hmm. And they, they taught them everything. And, and what we did was we tapped into a market that was just starting up. And this is like two, three years ago now. But we did the tiny houses. Mm -hmm. So instead of having them train outside on, on big houses and building all that, we got a warehouse on the south side, and we just trained them building tiny houses. And if they sold a tiny house, um, they would get part of the proceeds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so they learned it was fun. Um, we dealt with Tesla. Tesla did our solar panels, you know, really? put on top of the house. Yeah, it was it was all sustainable, how you know, housing. It, mm -hmm. was, it was seventy degrees all year round, you know, what I mean, <laughs> that type inside. So uh, it was dope. The concept was dope. And out of that movement, we had um, seven guys create their own companies out of that. Went on to do their own thing and mm -hmm. they're still successful to this day. We had two guys come with me and create a whole another company called a Hand Up. Um, which was kind of just light maintenance and construction. And then one guy went back, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, still in contact with him to this day, just keeping his mind right. But out of 10 people, I think that was a successful movement, mm -hmm. you know? And those people, mainly what we tried to do was teach them a skill, a trade. The unions helped out a lot. They got trained by the unions. Some of them went into the union. Mm -hmm. um, but the main thing was they, they got a trade and they feeding their families now, man. And they did they. they they stayed away from the BS, you know what I mean? So that was the, the big part of what we tried to do. Mm -hmm. And we did it. I ain't going to say try to do, but we did it. Yeah, absolutely. But, but Me had a hand in helping that happen. Oh, and Harry, um, the manager of Be Me Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. you know, I had to give him some love, too, because he's a good dude, man. And, and um, he, he he understands what needs to be done out here, man. So right. That's that's my be me thing. Awesome. Uh, along with being there this weekend, yeah, you know, yeah, for yeah. The conference, the Genius <clears throat> Conference, which was again, it was so dope and off the hook, man. Yeah. I can't even describe. It. You have to be there to understand. Yeah, for people who don't know <laughs> what that is, what is uh, that the the be me? Um, be me, be me is kind of like the main thing we talk about is um, you being a narrative, changing the narrative of how black men are looked at and talked about. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, and it's you know it's black male excellence, man, at its finest, man. Mm -hmm. And every year they award um, uh, a monetary uh, grant to ten people from different cities. I think it's like seven cities now. And Pittsburgh is one of them. And so those guys um, could use that money towards their nonprofit or, or anything they're trying to um, get off the ground that's in service of others. Mm -hmm. You know. And so <coughs> you know I can go on and on about it, but that's basically it, man. Just acknowledging that there's a lot of good black men out here doing a lot of good things, man. Mm -hmm. Great things. Right. And so you know we're all called geniuses. It's the Be Me Genius Conference. And we come together and share ideas and fellowship, man, and craft. We have to. And, you know, again, that's good for your soul and your spirit, man, because we talked about the mental health side of things. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. And that's <clears> big, <throat> man. And so, you know, I encourage brothers and sisters to get out here, man. And um, if you need somebody to talk to, don't be ashamed to, to go find somebody. Mm -hmm. We, we got to get rid of that stigmatism in the black community that mental health is bad or it means you're crazy or something. Right. Man. Nah, man. We all need to be recharged and refocused, man. And so we can get out here and keep doing this work that we do. Absolutely. You know, and, and love each other more. And yeah. listen to each other more and communicate better, man. So D Definitely <laughs> communicate better. You know, yeah. I, I'm all for it, man. And so, you know, um, yeah, because that's one of the things in I know in the black community, like it's kind of one of those things that I know, like we talked about before, we kind of just kind of brush it off or you know be a little bit. You got you got to toughen up, you got to harden up a little <laughs> bit, and we kind of just you know when um, there is actually something going on mentally with somebody like that they can't really control, really, right. or c express. <clears throat> Some people just know how to uh, know how to express themselves the proper way, and so they lash out, you know, like some of these kids in some of these schools, you know. Um, Instead of throwing them out and all that, let's let's get to the root cause. Let's talk to these kids, man, and and, and do what we can from there. Um, but yeah, my my whole purpose, man, um, 
and I always tell the, the you know anybody I'm talking about find what your purpose is and then move from there man I, I'm just <laughs> blessed that what I'm doing ties into my purpose now yeah. if you can make that happen you okay oh yeah you know what I mean? yeah because you got stuff going on you got like a sports marketing firm you're mm -hmm. doing stuff uh, with uh Lee Davis Associates, like, what made you create those two different things? I mean, obviously, it's what you're passionate about, but how did you get those two things off the ground? Well, Lee Davis and Associates Consulting, <clears throat> LLC, is um, basically anything business, sports, community, and um, entertainment mm -hmm. uh, under that umbrella. Um, and, but within the sports side, it started to grow so fast and get so big that I had to create another thing with my, my partner, Steve Lowe, out of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and so now that became sports marketing firm Atlanta Pittsburgh, and that's the name of the company. Gotcha. And so Steve really handles that business. You okay. know what I mean? Um, even though we're partners, there's a lot of things that I got my hand in, partnering or whatever, but I may not be the face of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so <laughs> I understand when to listen, when to lead, or when to follow. Mm -hmm. You know, so... That's why a lot of our things were successful, man. Of course, we had some ups and downs, some bumps in the roads. You, you know, everything isn't perfect. But, you know, again, our goal is to hire people who are really geniuses. And most of the time, geniuses, you can't understand them sometimes. <laughs> right. You just got to let them do what they do. Right. You, and, and, and so that's where we're at with it, man. And that's, that's those two. Lee Davis and Salt, we help with community building. Um, we do contract negotiations, depending on what it is, whether it's TV and film. We're in TV and film now, of course, mm -hmm. um, uh, and various other things, man. So that's where those two things came from. And then, of course, uh, my man Monty has Unico Vino Wine, a boutique wine company mm -hmm. where we can make any flavor that you want, you know, uh, uh, any label, any face you want on the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, that's that. Uh we also now I've partnered with um, Brad Summer Summer Law Group, and we now have um, a sports agency SLG Sports and Entertainment. Uh, we we have licensed NFL agents. Mm -hmm. um, we do movie stuff, licensing, um, intellectual property. We have a full law firm behind us, no matter what we're doing. So mm -hmm. It's connected to law firm. Um, uh, one of the big things, and I'll tell y'all this, you know, this 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 is an exclusive. Okay. You know, I'm giving y'all the exclusive. Okay, that's what you we like. What I mean? Here's the exclusive. <laughs> um, I'm now, along with my, my partner Brad Lamont Pete, who's been in TV for a long time, um, uh, my man Byron Reynolds out of Chicago, and Shaba Du from Breaking in One and Breaking Two. If people don't know, go look at that. It's a classic film. Uh -huh. um, Shaba Du, a.k.a. Ozone. We are all uh, producing Breaking Three. Whoa! Yeah, so we in the middle of getting that all <laughs> tightened up right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, we looking hopefully to have Chris Brown be the head, but we still going. Uh, we still in negotiations about a lot of things. So this is the first time anybody hearing about it. We got the poster. That's a big stuff. deal. Right? Yeah. Um, out now on, on uh, Amazon Prime is The Hills, a, a movie I produced, exec produced with a few people. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's it's, it's all right. You know, first time out. There's a lot of stars in it. Yeah. You know, Clifton Powell, Terrell Hicks, um, uh, and I can go on. I, I can't remember everybody's name, but there's a lot of stars in the movie. But it was our first time out, so it's kind of rough. You know what I mean? Okay. But people supporting it, and you know what, what? What? One thing they gotta understand: we support business. We're able to generate income, which can help somebody else. Mm -hmm. So that's my main thing. You know, all these businesses and companies and um, between them all. They're like feeding each other. Yeah, yeah, and they're feeding other people, feeding right. families and bringing other people in and showing people how to handle business in, in, in uh, certain areas, uh, show you how to have direction, time management, um, what it takes to make something come off the ground, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because some people only see the end result. They don't see the process. Right. You know, the process is super important, the work that goes into something. Um so that's where we're at with it, man. Um, you know, last couple of years, I've been able to, from all these little ventures and people knowing your name and really networking for a purpose, not just to hang out. Right. Your name gets known in the business in the business arena and in um, just circles. Right. You know, even though I'm not in them, people in those circles come holler at me. Right. Um, and so two years ago, uh, with this Oakland Raiders situation, one of my consultants in the music business came to me and said, hey, man, me and Rodney Peake trying to put this group together to go after the Oakland Raiders. You want to be in trying to buy him? Yeah. trying to buy him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we formed a little company, man, and, and and so I've been working with Michael A. Jordan, the NFL great Rodney Peake, uh, uh, a 
and a few others um, on becoming minority owners of the Raiders. So we was negotiating stadium uh-huh. team, you know, dealing with flying in and out of California, dealing with the the mayor of Oakland, uh, Miss Libby, and um, so you know, up to this point, of course, they kind of said. Uh, they're going to go to Vegas. Right. But that's still up in the air. That's not etched in stone. Okay. So, um, but that was, I learned a lot from that, man. It's still dealing with these brothers, man, um, and negotiating with major attorneys and, <clears throat> and land. Um, I mean, it was so much connected to this. Right. Um, and then to know that, you know, with, with Mr. Uh, Mark Davis, who got the, the team from his dad once he died, mm-hmm. for, you know, he was telling us how the NFL didn't want uh our particular group to have a shot at owning the team. Right. So to know all that little subtle racist stuff that goes on mm-hmm. and that we still got to deal with no matter what level you get on, you still got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. You know, I learned a lot from that too, man, and not to be um, kind of blind to certain situations or think that if you get to a certain level, you don't got to deal with uh, this this thing called racism out here. Right. I think your shirt explains it pretty right, well right, too. Right, right, right. You got right, the message right. on the shirt. <laughs> right, <laughs> so right. that explains that. <laughs> Yeah, fully committed to knocking out racism. Absolutely. You know I mean? So that's just one of our, our movements. Well, that's, too. that's what's up. I mean, so you have, like, a ton of experience, a ton of knowledge and wisdom. What has been, like, one of the biggest challenges you faced, and what was the greatest lesson that you may have learned through that experience or that situation? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. The biggest challenge that I faced was, first of all, um, myself. You know, my, my confidence. Because, you know, you get into certain things. Sometimes it's by happenstance. Sometimes it's by, you know, opportunity come, you jumped on it, but you're really not sure about how you're going to handle it. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes, <clears throat> um, depending on how you get in it, you may uh, take a, a, a L. Mm-hmm. And that shocks your confidence and say, man, I might not. I don't know if I'm built for this stuff, man. I know what I want to do, but this is a whole nother level, man. So on certain levels, I just had to get past myself. And then also... You know, some people that look like you and look like us is the, are the roadblocks. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I you know I call it. You know, you're dealing with bougie Negro syndrome. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, because yeah. I don't have letters after my name. Some some people think you shouldn't be in that space. Right. You know what I mean? Or if you ain't a part of a certain group or organization, they think you shouldn't be over there or in that mix. Mm-hmm. And so you deal with that, especially here in Pittsburgh, since it's so small. Right. But I've I've knocked them doors down, went around, and, and now mm-hmm. some of these cats men and women who try to block me and say certain things behind my back because of my past, you know, now they want to work for me or work with me. Right. You know? So that's poetic justice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and, and there's a story. I was, here's another crazy story. I'm out and about somewhere and we have a conversation and this brother's arguing with me about something, man. He's going on and on, all this stuff, man. And so two weeks later, I'm in my office and, you know, I have I had a few properties that I was renting out. So I'm sitting in for the secretary, you know what I mean? Every, nobody really knows me. I'm just sitting there because I'm, so I'm gone. I'll, I'll be at the front desk. Yeah. So in comes this brother, man. <laughs> After all this messy talk, what do you need? Apartment. You need a place to stay. <laughs> right. That's what we got to go through. Got to go through. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I don't get caught up in all that stuff, but it's just funny in this city how people look at you based on what they've heard or what people have said about you behind your back and all that stuff. For the most part, I have nothing but love for people in the city, but there's a group always in every city and every circumstance that want to see you stay where they thought you should be or where they heard you was from. Mm -hmm. And so we, my thing is also, I'm just spelling all myths about the hood dudes, about whatever you thought about. Man, listen, you can do whatever you want to do as long as you research, study, and get that 10,000 hours in, man, and become an expert at it. And, our motto is it's only solutions, no problems. Mm. You know, so we solution based. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> you know, it ain't a problem to me. I'm gonna make it happen. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that. That's that street. That's that edge that you have coming from the street. <clears throat> you never lose that. I never lost mine anyway. My my swag is the same now. I wear what I want to wear. Right. You know, I'm not disrespectful, but I'm gonna say what I want to say, whether it's with you or the mayor. Right. <laughs> Um, yeah, speak your mind. Yeah, I don't owe you anything. You don't owe me anything. We could work together, or we we may not work together. Right. But you're not going to disrespect me. You're not right. going to just you know say anything about me because at the end of the day, yeah, I'm known for these businesses, and I'm known to be a good guy and help a lot of people. But don't have me come for you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, because I literally have an army behind me. Right. You know, and and that is no joke. And I'm not a, a violent person at, at all. But guess what, man? I got I got my team behind me too. Yeah, you got a good support system. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So 
you know, don't don't say nothing that you regret later. Right. <laughs> you know or I mean? for anybody for that matter. <laughs> right, I mean, right, you, you right, shouldn't right, you shouldn't right. want to, you know, burn any bridges or exactly. you know, or come at anybody a certain way. I mean, we're all human beings at the end of the day. Thank you. We all got our faults, but at the end of the day, we still got to be able to work together in some capacity. Right. Um, you know, so, you know, that's my piece on that. Right. Um, but as, and so as far as the future goes, where do you see yourself going in like the next two to five years or if there's any other like big plans um, for yourself or any ideas or anything like that? And, and, and probably three to five years, <clears throat> um, I see myself being more involved in TV and movie stuff. Okay. You know, I got a couple major production teams coming in town in the next couple of weeks to um, do some uh, some TV stuff, man, about what's going on in the neighborhoods with these young guys and, and showing... Um, really the the real deal out here in these streets of Pittsburgh with the young cats. Is this like a show, documentary? Yeah, it's going to be like a docudrama. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that is going to be probably where I'm going to tell stories now. Okay. And um, this is the first opportunity to really do that, and uh, we're going to take really a stronghold on it. And then I want to talk about how, tell stories about music and how it can bring people together. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the areas I think we're going to start with is McKeesport because, you know, McKeesport, they got Crawford and Harrison. So we want to try to bring those two factions together but through music and love. Mm -hmm. to the, the one thing that I know they both love is music and, and hip-hop. Right. So we're going to try to figure that out and make that into a show, too. And I, a big production company coming um, to, to, to look at that situation. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, by, that's really through Richard Garland, man, you know, one of my mentors making all that happen. And so... Uh, we're going to see where that comes from. Help, hopefully help these guys, man, not only financially, but, but but sitting down, being able to talk and work things out, man. Um, that whole anger management and conflict resolution thing is big, man, mm -hmm. but you got to know how to get in there and, and make it happen. Mm -hmm. Can't just be wagging your finger and saying, pull your pants up and stop doing and, you know, all that stuff that everybody want to do. No, nah, we're going to try a different um, <clears throat> angle and direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what's up. One of the things I also did want to ask is like, how have you developed your mindset? Like, any good, any good books or mentors or anybody Sheesh. that you look up to, or because, like I said, you have just a ton of knowledge, <laughs> right? And, and a lot of times I don't get to express it the way I want to, except with the youngins. You know, um, a lot of times I, I see adults in certain circles and whatever, and I just like, you know. I ain't even gonna waste my time because sometimes adults are just caught up in their own thing and they don't want to listen. Whether especially Pittsburgh, <laughs> a lot of times you see people come from out of town and say the exact same thing that you say or have told some people, but their ice is colder than yours. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So sometimes to this point, at this point in my life, I kind of like ah, I ain't gonna even say nothing no more. These guys, <laughs> man, I'm gonna just give all my knowledge to the youth and these young adults that that may not get it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give them the vegetables, you know, because yeah. I mean? they get sugar all day. I'm gonna be the vegetables for them so they can be healthy, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that's where I'm at with it. But um, mentors, sheesh, I got a ton of them to this day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All over the country. Um, so you, you're never too old to have a mentor. I read a lot, mm -hmm. and probably too many books to name. What kind know? of like what kind but of books? I, are I, I read a lot of historical stuff, okay. like real life situation type things. Um, I'm a real, I'm big on history. I'm a history buff because my dad always told me. Not only know your history as a black man, but know world history and your relation to the world. You know, so that's what I've always been on. So I read about everything from from my peoples to the history of Europe. You know, to the military stuff, Hannibal, how it relates to you know cats in Asia, the the, the major military cats in Asia. So I, I read a lot of stuff, man. Presidents, mm. um, the Illuminati, mm. <laughs> you know, money. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's all relative. Right. And so I read a lot of stuff. I read a lot about um, things here in Pittsburgh, too. I know Leon Ford got a great book out that everybody should go get. Richard Garland has a great book out. Um, and I can go on and on. There's a lot of local authors here that, that are on a national platform that you can really read and learn a lot from. So um, that's that's me, man. Mentors, reading, and then giving it back. Mm -hmm. you know, I wish I could get rich enough to just be like Bill Gates and all these other cats mm. that just, and Warren, you know, Buffett, Warren that Buffett. say, hey, man, I just want to give it all away. Right. I want to get so rich that people are outside my office downtown protesting how much money I got. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Calling me all types of names or signs. Right. You know, so I know that I can just give it all back, give it all away, man, to people that need it. Mm -hmm. You know, and and all too often, 
I see cats come from certain situations. Uh, again, in Pittsburgh, a lot of athletes make it and they never give back to the neighborhood they came from, which is sad. Right. And that, that's very true in my town of Braddock. You know, a lot of dudes play for Woodland Hills, going to the pros, and um, they come back and floss, buy the bar out, you know, talk stuff. Mm. But they really give back to that community, to the community they come from. So I, I never wanted to be that guy. Right. You know, so nobody will ever be able to, to say, you know, he, he did that. He made this and never, no matter what I do, it's for the people, man. Right. And to inspire them, empower them. And, and I want to share with them everything, you know, all my knowledge, whatever I may have. If it's the last shirt I have here, bro, mm. <laughs> here, sis, mm. you know. Um, and so we have a lot of people that come to me with their kids, especially the young men. Um, about trying to help them, give them some knowledge, help them with work, with jobs, whatever. Mm. So I do the best I can through my network to, to make that happen. Mm. And then uh, as we just get closer to wrapping up, what's like some good advice that you may give to maybe a struggling entrepreneur or somebody that's you know maybe just starting out or maybe in the thick of things or even trying to get to the point of where they can get to maybe retirement, <laughs> the whole the whole life cycle of an entrepreneur. What's some really good advice? Um, one, of course, you know, never give up. After you know what you're really trying to get into and understand what you're getting into and understand the market, never give up. Get a good team around you, a good support system around you. Because no matter which we do, we know we're, we're not an island unto ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so get a good team around you. Never give up. Know what you're trying to do. And connect it to your purpose. Find out what your purpose is. If, if I could say find out what your purpose is first, do that. Mm -hmm. And then build just stuff around your purpose because it gives you more meaning now. Mm -hmm. You know, so once you find your purpose, build it around it, man, and feed into that purpose. Um, again, my purpose is the youth. My purpose is my community. And, and none of us are perfect. <laughs> and, you know, that's why we have a higher power. Right. Um, I, I love my God. My, again, if it wasn't for my grandma and probably my family standing in the gap praying for me, I know I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Uh, and I and I don't take that for granted. Right. I don't take anything for granted. Really, being here, this is like being on MTV or BET, <laughs> or, or it's just as big to me. Right. You know, I, I don't consider one bigger than the other. Mm. And so, for 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 you to have this platform, for guys like me to be able to even say anything, to say even say hi, yeah, know, and um, is 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 big, man. It's monumental. I appreciate you guys for doing what you're doing, because mm. um, everybody can't do this. Right. We well, appreciate you, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I'm already in here thinking, like, how can I invest in this? To, or what can I do to take it to another level? Maybe when them guys come in, man, I'll introduce y'all to that production team. Yeah. And you don't know what may happen. Right. This could go on a national stage like that. Mm -hmm. You know, even though people don't know you, they probably did 100 episodes. Right. But when you get up there, oh, man, it's overnight. Where this come from? <laughs> we like, we, we've been doing this for, like, almost a year now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> Man, so you know you get all that stuff, but but at the end of, at the end of the day, you know what's in your heart, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I hope that you guys have going to have a thousand episodes, man. Y'all affect a lot of people. Um, a lot of people watch this, and um, I'm a big fan. I, you know, I've probably watched every episode. I've gotten a lot of info from different <laughs> people that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I'm always um, open to learn new things, and um, I'm just grateful, man. I appreciate and, it. You know any. And before we go, um, if anybody want to reach me, my personal email is PGH All Stars, the number 11 at gmail.com. That's PGH All Stars, the number 11 at gmail.com. Um, so y'all can hit me questions. If you're under 21 or you're 21 and under, I do workshops all the time for free. If you're 21 and over and you working, you got to write that check. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing free out here. That's right. I know y'all see all this networking and crowdfunding and all that and people asking for money all the time and on their birthdays saying give a donation to this, that, and the third. <laughs> That's all great. That ain't what I do. <laughs> you know, if I'm going to give to somebody, we give them from the company or from my pocket, man, and, and that's that. And if you see me on a network saying give me, please, I need, it's usually for somebody else. Right. Or in nine times ten, I don't do that, man. I'm from a different era, man. In the 90s, we, we got it from the muscle, from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plus, I mean, that's an investment, so you got to yeah. look at it as that. So Exactly, and I never want anything free. I never even wanted a free lunch in school. <laughs> I'm going to work to get that lunch, man, because, um, you know, you get stereotyped, mm. you know. So 
free lunch program, whatever. I ain't want none of that, man. Don't give me nothing for free. You know <laughs> got you. I, mean? I don't even want free advice, man. Got if, you. I, if I gotta give you five dollars for it, here, man, take that, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know I feel you. I'm just a different dude, though. Got you. Know? you. I ain't mad at nobody for what they do. I just know what I got to do and what I do. Right. I got you. Know? you. And I love my team. I love my family, and I love God, man. Amen. You know? Good stuff. And then um, at the end of every every, uh, every episode, um, we do a 24-hour challenge um, because you laid down a lot of good information, a lot of good insight, and we want people to actually apply that information and knowledge. So what's a good challenge that you would propose to the audience that they can take and actually do in the next 24 hours? In the next 24 hours, I would challenge everybody that's watching this to go out and just love somebody new, man. Go find somebody new and just tell them that you love them. Somebody, even if it's somebody that you've seen throughout the course of your day, every day, if you work downtown or if you just walk the hood or whatever, just go tell somebody that you love them, man, and and be an heir to somebody. I mean, I don't know how to do one thing in 24 hours, so I'm going to say love somebody, listen to somebody, mm -hmm. um, you know, handle your business, be respectful, uh, and, and that's my 24-hour challenge, man. And and even more than that, man, love yourself. Self-care, man. If you have to take a day off to just get some rest, take care of yourself. Because you can't take care of anybody else if you can't take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's my 24-hour <laughs> challenge. And uh, again, y'all see what it is? Absolutely. 24-hour hustle show, <laughs> man. <laughs> Absolutely. So definitely love yourself. Let's start with that. Love yourself. Spend some time with yourself. And then love each other. So that'll definitely be a good way to, to wrap it up. So definitely appreciate you My being man. on the show. We're definitely going to stay connected. We may even have to do another episode because you're doing so many great things. Hey, I love to get into <laughs> it, man. And we really get into this business thing, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and talk about, you know, all the real stuff that I got going on because they opportunities for somebody. Man. Absolutely. That's what it is. Absolutely. Well, uh, we definitely appreciate you coming on. We definitely appreciate you watching right now. And uh, for those of you that have been watching, uh, now that we know what Davis does with his 24 hours, we want to know what you do with your 24 hours. Definitely comment down below, accept that challenge, and we will see you on the next episode.